Hi, my name is Natasha Ashka. By profession, I'm a TV presenter and also an author. I recently released a book called Me, Myself and My Arranged Marriage, which is available on Amazon, Kindle, etc, etc. Now, if you know me, then you'll know. And if you don't know me, then let me tell you that I am one of those people who is pretty hot when it comes to manners. I've been asked by countless people to write about what is the proper way and also simply out of order when it comes to dating people in the 21st century, especially when there's so much emphasis out there on guys and girls acting cool and also using that let's be friends with benefits philosophy, the I'm not ready for a relationship rubbish. But I expect you to do the things that we should only do when in a relationship fluff and the ones who want you to be loyal to them, but they want to be able to be free to do whatever they want ethos. But you also find people who are not appearing too interested in case they come across as desperate. You have those who like to play the field and on top of all that having to deal with commitment phobes and also the emotionally dry folk and also the ultimate time wasters. So I thought, why not take it one step further and make a tutorial about some of the do's and don'ts in technological etiquette. So guys and girls, I want to say to you, welcome to Date Tech. It would seem that we live in such a modern day age that everyone is glued to their phone, their tablet and the mobile. That it's become acceptable that when someone responds with a letter K after you've written an essay, well for the record, no it's not okay. And I'm all for technology and I'm all for new trends, but I think we've lost sight of how to communicate face to face in the process. So let me break it down simply for you guys. Especially if you're on a date with someone or even just hanging out with people, these are the things you need to remember and keep in mind. So number one, when you're out for dinner with someone, for the love of God, put your phone away. If you're staring at it all the time, just go home, stop wasting the other person's time. If you're on the receiving end, breathe move on and don't tolerate such road behavior. And if you're one of those people who is better on text, email than face to face, please work on your skills. Kind regards from every man and woman who has had to carry the burden of the conversation when yours has been really dry. You will also lose many potential love interests if you do not sort out your skills. It's such a disappointment guys and girls when someone is witty, they're charming from the comfort of their living room, but a complete bore when it comes to face to face. You know the drill. When you are driving, do not text, do not call, do not go onto social media, don't do any of that kind of stuff because you know you'll probably end up saying bye bye to your driving license. But if you're chatting to someone who needs an instant response, just tell them that you're driving and hopefully they won't have a full blown mental breakdown. You know what I'm talking about. You've either been on the receiving end or the giving end. Also, whilst waiting for a reply, some of the things that you need to watch out for, and I don't understand this, what's the deal with 1x, 2x and 3x's? Let's hope and pray that 1x still means friends, 2 means I kind of like you and 3 means boom, you have some serious interest from the other person, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Now there's nothing more annoying than when you message someone an essay via WhatsApp or even via text and you can see them online on the messenger facility for about an hour and they respond with a, okay, well let me tell you for the record. I have written essays and only to be responded with such a pathetic response, it's not cool people, not cool whatsoever. Now when messaging your boss, do not end messages with X's, it's unprofessional, it's not cool and may get you fired. So be a little bit careful there and also be a bit careful with dirty jokes. Now we all love a good old laugh, but sometimes they can be taken in the wrong way. So best thing would be is to save them for your family, very close friends and colleagues who you know you can trust 150%, okay? Now we all live in a day and age where everyone is tech savvy. Even my 72 year old mother knows what a single and a double blue tick on WhatsApp means. Yes, believe you me, they are moving up in the world. So if you have the time to read someone's message and they know you have, it's only courtesy that you respond. If you were at work, diving with sharks or even jumping off a bridge, that's fine. Just send a little line to say that you will either message back later or are a bit busy right now and will message when you're free. Not messaging just shows that you are rude, you don't care about the person and you're not really interested. What's worse is if the other person can see that you are online and active, not just on your WhatsApp but on other social media platforms, you just look like a total douche and will end up having next to no respect in their eyes. I get everyone these days is on some sort of dating website or app, so everyone appears to have their own new, revised and improved forms of dating etiquette. Have a one thing which is totally uncouth totally uncultured is dumping someone via text. Now if you've done this, shame on you. If you are planning to do it, 
it just shows you haven't got much of a spine to say the truth to the other person and you don't come across as a hero or heroine. In fact, you come across as a self-centered pillock who needs to grow a pair. Just saying. If for whatever reason you cannot say it face to face, sometimes situations do arise where it's not possible, then at least say it clearly on the phone. Do not ask them to call you or more recently the term or the phrase being used as ping me unless you have called them twice and not received a response then that can be taken into account. However, for now, let's talk a bit more about tech. Social media. No doubt it's huge and people who are not on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Snapchat are considered freaks of nature. I am not on Snapchat. However, you can find me everywhere else in the world. So, we love a bit of Facebook and we love sharing the ins and outs of our lives. However, I have to say, some need to be a tad more reserved in what you are sharing with your potential love interest. Firstly, Naked pictures are a big fat no-no. Trust no one when it comes to your personal sexy picture collection. They are more than likely to come out when you least expect them and will probably be not a great conversation when it comes to having it with your in-laws over a dining table. Also, I'm sure your folks may not be as understanding as the Kardashians when a sex tape of you emerges. So for the love of God, once again, please be smart people and please be sensible. The number of people who have either missed out on their dream job due to a shady past is unreal. So just imagine before you decide to share too much with the other half, is it worth the long-term chances? Ah, oh, that it's not. Now, I've been guilty and I am one of those people who posts one of those quotes of the day. You know what I mean, a positive message when you're feeling how you feel at the time, which may not be great after having a horrible day or an encounter or a bad experience. Now we all do it. It will get everyone showering you with love and affection and positive online loving. I'm not gonna hate on such activity. Life is simply too short. And you do not know what someone is going through. So you know what? Give them a bit of loving. In life, you may come across some immature individuals who choose to go AWOL from your life. Now, this happens to many a people, regardless if you're an A-list celebrity or if you're just someone like me or you. Nowadays, this is called ghosting. Now, remember this term because ghosting means a male or female individual who will just disappear off the face of the earth one day without care in the world for you, your feelings or your relationship. I'm talking whoosh. Aside from ghosting, there are a few other terms that you should be aware of. Are you ready for this education? Firstly, another term that you should be aware of is benching. This is when you kind of like someone but aren't too sure about them, so you keep them as an option and an open option too and put them on a reserve list. So keep your eyes and ears open as you will never be told when you've been benched. Another word is textationship. This is when you know the ins and outs of his or her life, you haven't met, however you feel and believe that you truly know this person through and through. FYI, no you do not. If catfish has taught us anything, you need to see to believe people. Another one is haunting. Now this occurs when your ex pops up out of nowhere and begins to tag you like your pictures from 1999 and tries to act like your chum. At this point, run for the hills, people. Now to make it sound like some sordid horror film, the last term is zombieing. Yes, think of the nastiest monster you can picture in your mind because this is when an ex suddenly reappears into your life with a text, with an email, with a WhatsApp, or even worst case scenario, or in-person visit. Now this would be a step up from the haunting type as you will have to brace yourself for a face-to-face -face encounter instead of them creeping around on your Facebook or your Instagram. Now they're normally the ones who are pretty offended when they can't see what's going on in your life after you probably block them on your social media. Now probably with justified reason, however, when things go sour, you may decide to finally blank your significant other at the time Consequently, they may try and communicate with you and not via text or call or WhatsApp. They will use their WhatsApp profile picture or Facebook post to send you a subliminal message. Those messages they cannot say to your face or make themselves. And they'll make out that they're so happy and cool and you know amazing in their lives, but without you. Now, firstly, again, like I've said this many times, it's not cool. Secondly, it's childish. Thirdly, these people live in la-la land, people, and have no sense of relationships or the real world. Firstly, if you have a problem, deal with it. Secondly, if you want to say something, pick up the phone and get the person to meet up and say it. And lastly, have the backbone to deal with any issues that you may have. Now, we would all love to think that we are perfect, but we aren't. Have the spine to listen and take on board when someone is telling you that you've hurt their feelings in some way. 
These days, many people feel that social media is a quicker way to communicate. If you like someone, you send them a message or you'll call them. Now, recently I was told that if you're seeing someone and you call them, you text them, you're not, you're not in each other's faces, if after doing all that, they send you a Facebook message, it just goes to show it's gone. Game over, people. That's it. Back to the drawing board. Well, I disagree on that. In my opinion, communication is key in building strong and healthy relationships. So if your other half is messaging you on WhatsApp and you reply on Facebook, at least you're getting in touch and showing that you care, or in, care, in fact, they care. If they don't have the messenger facility and you know they aren't on it, not messaging you, and clearly their fingers haven't been broken as they have the ability to message on other, other people or on other platforms, that's called being shady and that's called being sneaky. However, it is always good to stay in touch with those you like, love and care about. And even if you don't feel anything, I just mentioned or have the courage one way or another to let the person know it's important that you do and don't hide behind your phone or your computer screen. It's just basic decency. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed my date tech etiquette video. In my next video, I'll be talking all about customer service. But for now, thank you for watching.